Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. As I near the 50th episode, incredible, really, the guests continue to diversify. In fact, the Shades of E has grown so much, I am often approached by guests to join the show to discuss their innovative products, ideas, service, and other. And today's guest is one of those individuals. And the topic that he brought forth was one that I have not covered before. Intellectual property. So let's get into this. What is intellectual property and why should an entrepreneur care? Intellectual property is work or innovation that is the result of creativity such as a manuscript or a design to which one has rights and for which one may apply for patent, copyright, trademark, etc. An easier definition was created by the World Intellectual Property Organization or WIPO. Intellectual property, IP, refer to the creation of the mind such as inventions, literacy and artistry work, designs and symbols, names and images used in commerce. Now, I want to focus on that last piece, for commerce. That is right, my friends. You can make money off your own designs. Okay, okay, this is not novel idea, but it still warrants time for discussion. In fact, I'm sure you have heard of the most common IP types. Copyrights, patents, trademarks, and trade secrets. Let's briefly cover all four. Copyrights are the exclusive legal right given to the originator or the assignee to print, publish, perform, film, or record literacy, artistry, or musical material and to authorize others to do the same. Think of an architecture drawing, plans, and a building, graphic and structural work, music, songs. Go try and sell Michael Jackson music and see what happens. Actually, don't. Do not do this. That would be illegal because copyright laws. His estate owns the copyright to that music, and they will come at you. Another, patents. Patents are a government authority or license confirming a right or title for a set period especially the sole right to exclude others from making, using, or selling an invention. So in this case, it's not the music that is being patented, but the Apple computer used to mix the music. In fact, there are three different kinds of patents that I'll go into in a later episode. Utility, design, and plant patents. Trademarks are a symbol, word, or words legally registered or established to use as representing a company or product. The shades of entrepreneurship. That is my trademark. It is my badge of origin. It is my form so others are able to distinguish me from other podcasts. And if you try to rip off my podcast, I will find you and I will ask you to actually promote this podcast because I need more listeners. So please feel free to promote the podcast. Lastly, trade secrets. Trade secrets is a secret device or technique used by a company in manufacturing its products. There is no greater trade secret than the recipe for Coca-Cola. This formula was created in 1886 and has been kept a close secret shared with only a small group written down according to the Coca-Cola company page. I remember reading case studies in grad school about Coke and their trade secrets, but there are others like what's in the McDonald's secret sauce. What about those KFC secret blends of 11 herbs and spices? What herbs? What spices? I like chicken. Okay. Now I'm giving away too much of my trade secrets. So what are you waiting for entrepreneurs? Get out there, explore some thoughts, maybe come up with some own intellectual property. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy this episode. Welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship, where we interview entrepreneurs to inspire the future entrepreneur. I'll be your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. So grab a drink, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. My next guest was born and raised in New York. He is a father. 
father of three with over 20 years of experience in software engineering and project management. This company aims to help people understand and better manage how their mind works. He is the founder of the Foresight Model, David Straub. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, I have the owner of Foresight, David Straub. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Oh, another day in paradise, baby. Another Excellent. day in paradise. So Excellent. first, want to get into Foresight. Pretty cool stuff. Right. But first, let's introduce the world to David. Give us a little background. Okay. Who is David? Um, I grew up in New York on Long Island, uh, which is funny because we kind of act like it's a separate state. Um, <laughs> we were there for 30 years and uh, kind of was looking to get my career going and it wasn't happening there. So I was married at the time. My wife and I moved down to DC um, to pursue multimedia development. That quickly morphed into the internet in 1994, which was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. And for the next, you know, 20 plus years, I was doing web development. Okay. And so, so what is Foresight? Foresight, um, you know, it, it's kind of like a laser. It's, it's like a thing that has a lot of different applications. Uh, but the basic way I explain it is that it's a behavior heuristic. It tells you how your mind works. After that, there's a whole bunch of things you can do with it. And, and why, why was it created? Um, back in 2015, early 2015, as a side project, I looked to start up a self-help mental health website for youth experiencing adversity. And at the end of the two-year period, uh, the psychologist friend of mine that was working on it with me, we decided not to pursue that endeavor. But what I had con come up with was the basis of the foresight model. So kind of like the, the beginnings of this, the heuristic. And it was, seemed very valuable to me. It was very simple and straightforward, something that people could easily understand versus, you know, the complex psychological stuff going on. So I figured it was worth pursuing as a business. And, and so is, it's an app or? Well, see, yeah, see, that's the thing. So, so basically, I would look at it as like foresight models, intellectual property. Okay. And, you know, what can you do with it? You, you can make a personality test. Um, I could do, you know, I set up a burnout program. The thing that I've, you know, and that you kind of, you uh, uh, referenced was the most thing that it came up with is that the best way to kind of package it and present it to the public is via an app. And that's what I did back in May. Gotcha. So, so at this point that kind of, you know, embodies all the foresight intellectual property. Gotcha. So now this is a business, correct? Yes. So now is this like an LLC, S Corp, C Corp? Uh, at this point, I'm just an ABN. So an, an assumed business name, pretty much the, the, the base model that you need for doing business in Oregon. Yeah. Now, was this funding capital, uh, grassroots or cap venture capital? How, how'd you fund it? Yeah. So at this point I'm kind of not funded, so to speak. Okay. Um, I did spend a good three to four years, really sweat equity. Um, I had, you know, saved up a bunch of money. So it was kind of like my own savings wasn't necessarily, you know, an investment. It was more paying my bills, yeah. <laughs> but I needed a lot of time to develop kind of the, uh, the intellectual property, the model to present it to people. And what I did over the course of that period is that I began coaching people so that I could see the model in action. Could they understand it? Could they integrate it into their life and, you know, make improvements in their behavior? Nice. And so is this, is this your first business? Have you done previously owned other businesses before? Yeah, I, I've done multiple businesses. Um, I probably, the first one was when I was going to college, I uh, set up a mobile, mobile DJ business. I did a lot of college parties and also Sweet Sixteens and, and other events on the side. And that put me through college. After that, I started up a video production company when I was 25, did that for five years, and I've had a couple of others in between. So what, what would you say have, you know, you've learned from your previous entrepreneur experiences that helped you with this one? Um, yeah, you know, I, I think the most important thing for me, of course, this is what Foresight's all about, is that it's really about your people skills. A lot of people focus on the, you know, the technological aspect. Oh, I have this great thing and everyone needs to see it um, or whatever, you know, other area they want to focus on. But to me, if you're building a company and you're looking to build a product, you need people to build it. And unless you incorporate them in that, you know, kind of foundational way, to me, you're, you're going to kind of go awry. And I, I, we see that in a lot of companies today. Facebook is a perfect example, right? Huge trillion dollar company. Seems like it's pretty dysfunctional inside. <laughs> it does actually. You know, it's kind of funny. I argue with my wife like almost on a weekly basis. Like, please let me delete my Facebook account. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, that one of the things they did is just they they capture all of our memories. 
They what? They captured all of our memories. Well, yeah, and, and you know, you have to wonder how insidious that is because certainly they, they were they were not necessarily about doing what's in our best interest. They were figuring out, oh, how can they, you know, hook us in? Yeah, and they've done that really well. Um, yeah, I, I mean, it does provide a great. It's kind of like yeah, an encyclopedia of interactions, a yeah. um, a network of all your friends and stuff like that. Yeah. So let's let's get into foresight a little bit more in depth. So what what can you know an individual expect from this foresight program? It's a four four uh, series program, uh, correct? Yeah, yeah. So let's l- explain explain exactly kind of getting a little bit more in depth about what it is. So the the simplest way of putting it is that I change the way a person thinks, and it's surprising you, you know the little nuggets that I give to them how shocked they are at times. We kind of go through our lives. We're, we're very reactionary. We're not really observing it. We're kind of like so stuck in the weeds. And another part of it is just that, you know, we, we kind of don't have this reference system. We each grow up in these microcosms of the world, our households. And our parents teach us that this is how you look at the world. But there is no kind of like encyclopedia of information for behavior. So I give those two different things to people. I teach them how to observe their own life and see what's really going on. And I kind of give them this baseline reference so they can figure out, oh, is this appropriate or is this not? And what can I do to improve things? Interesting. So how are you able to capture all that in an app? Yeah, um, you know, it helps having my background. I've done video productions. I've done multimedia production. I've done software systems. So I'm very used to, you know, building an application that is kind of self-evident, you know, the whole user experience now. It's very easy to use. And I'm still honing that process. I have what I call the 1.0 version app uh, out. And I really need to sit down with people, sit over their shoulder, watch them use it, and see how self-directed it can be. But, you know, it's just really having a lot of experience and understanding, like, kind of how people operate and what a computer system needs to be in order to lead them through some educational process. Now let's let's talk about creating the creation of an app for a little bit because right. I think there's probably a misconception out there where, I, I, and I think I also have this misconception where, oh, I got a great idea. Let me just create an app. Right. How difficult is it to create apps? Um, you know, it depends what you want to do, and you know, certainly, I, I mean, apps are really something that's been around forever. They're just they're programs for your phone versus your computer. Mm-hmm. And obviously everyone, you know, when the internet came along and and the web browsers, we got very used to having apps in front of us all day long. So they needed, you know, something specific for a phone. And of course you have these, you know, kind of technical tie-ins that you can do specifically. It is advantageous to have a web, uh, a phone app versus using a web application on your phone web browser. But, um, you know, I guess the first thing I would say to someone is, yeah, create a website first. Focus your attention on creating the product versus getting kind of mired in the technology. And that's something that whenever I do software development with someone, that's what I do first anyway. I'm like, what's your business requirement? Don't think about technology at all. Think about what you want to do with the product and then figure out how you can achieve that objective. Yeah, and that's, that's a great point too because I, I think sometimes we go into it without plans. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have objectives. Yeah, and, and you know, I, I've been doing software development for 25 years now, and, and I'm surprised how routinely I'll be sitting down with leadership in a corporation, and they really are not used to the, the traditional process of going through software development. And it really needs to start with this kind of business requirements and doing your analysis of what the current system is and where you want to get to, and then figuring out how do you get there. Maybe that'll include technology. People get very focused on, you know, the, the buzzwords, what everyone else is doing and stuff like that. Is, so you've you've been mentioned you know you've uh, owned businesses before yeah what has been difficult about starting this business um you know it's funny when I first started so I don't have any uh, certification or background in psychology and it was very it made very clear to me by, by my psychologist friend that I can't be a therapist I I'll, I'll be breaking laws so I stayed away from you know, comparing foresight to a alternative to mental health care. Um, but ultimately that's where it was going to go and that's where it is at now. And, you know, just to think of the, the huge amount of momentum, both the stigma that's stuck in the public's mind, as well as the field itself. I mean, it's, it's in disarray in many different ways. Just to change all that is this like, you know, huge, complicated animal. Creating a product that works is easy. Getting to, changing people's perception, getting people to open to a new approach that's going to be the my big obstacle. Yeah, and we're creatures of habit. And, and then some. I mean, I, I can tell you right now, I'm one of those individuals that if I find like a good shirt at a store, 
you bet I'm buying the same exact shirt in every color, like five of them, because right. I don't want to buy another shirt. I'm guilty. Again. I own 20 black shirts, you know, is, yeah, <laughs> what can make my life easy? So, so let's, let's uh, kind of get, you know, we're living in a pandemic, mm-hmm. right? And, and you're kind of talking about mental health in this, this app. What can folks do at home? Like what kind of exercise or what can we do to feel mentally better? So it's funny. One of the big things and, and one of the unique differences about, you know, foresight, traditional therapy, you go and talk to a stranger and you keep it to yourself. And there's a number of reasons for that. People are kind of embarrassed about what they might be going through and that they've been unable to deal with it. The real best thing for us all to do is to interact with other people and be open with them. So what I would tell people to do is make phone calls and maybe write letters, do video Zoom calls. And if you can go out and meet them somewhere and socially distance, do that. Do a podcast. Yeah, that, <laughs> that, that'll help. So are there any kind of like nuggets or like exercises or things that things can, people can do other than, you know, maybe going out, maybe it's an intro, introvert, you know, they're not big fans of meeting people. Yeah, depending upon, so one of the fundamental kind of axioms of foresight is that you need to confront your feelings that undermine you. And for introverts, it's, yeah, socializing is kind of a, you know, a phobia almost, right? Um, so the idea for them would be to, yeah, challenge myself, push through that fear and go out and meet people. So it's, you know, whatever a, per- a person's particular challenge is, it's for them to confront it. Mm. Yeah, I, I see that. Now, I'm assuming there's probably been some moments, you know, starting this business where it's been difficult. Have, have you, have you experienced any moments of self doubt? Right. Uh, all the time. <laughs> you, you know, the funny thing is about emotions is that it's okay to have negative emotions. The question is, what do you do with them? I mean, we have them for a good reason. They, they, so they're supposed to support constructive action. So it's about not getting hung up on the emotion. I'm expert at that. That's kind of one of the reasons why I developed foresight. Um, yeah, you know, it's, uh, I'm a solopreneur. Uh, I'm an only child. I'm kind of used to being very, you know, self-directed and, and, and I'm very disciplined. That being said, certainly, you know, just starting up any business uh, will really exacerbate that. Add in the fact you're throwing it, you know, about, I guess, three years into the, the business, the pandemic hits. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it's, it's been, a, you know, it's been a struggle. But for me, you know, I, I bounce back. Whenever I uh, experience some negative emotion, I'm like, okay, what can I do to get through this and overcome this. So I'm, I'm like the energizer bunny rabbit. I keep trying and trying until I get to, you know, where I want to be feeling and, you know, moving ahead. Yeah. And let, let's talk about that a little bit. You mentioned, you know, you started this business a few years ago. Let's, when did you start this business and how did that transition through the pandemic affect it? Yeah. So, um, it was early 2015 when I, uh, you know, that self-help website, it was early 2017. So about uh, almost five years ago now. Um, that I st- officially started Foresight. And I was still working for a company and I left my last full-time job the middle of that year. Um, so initially it was trying to figure out what can I do to create revenue? What, what project can I sell? And th- there was a bunch of you know stuff I had to learn. For example, the fact that I don't have any credentials doesn't give me a foot in the door. I can have this great program for example, I have approached OHSU uh, among other organizations and they're, be, you know, they're going to be like, okay, you're just some guy who created a burnout program. What do we know? Uh, How is it that it's going to be effective and stuff like that? So it was really just, you know, trying uh, trial and error, trying a bunch of different things to finally find out what would be the vehicle that was going to take foresight to its conclusion. And the app, you know, after about four years, I figured out that that's what it was going to be. Yeah. So you probably, you know, been through a lot. You've, you've owned a lot of different businesses and now you own this business. What advice would you have for young entrepreneurs that are interested in starting their business? I, I would go back to one thing that I already mentioned is talk to as many people as possible. Not only, certainly in the field and, you know, that have relevant experience, but also to talk about all the emotional stuff with your, you know, your crowd, your, your circle. Um, it's really, you know, you, you learn a ton, a ton of things from different people. My mother's 82. I talk to her about my business all the time. She gives me little nuggets here and there, which are just golden, you know, and, and you can really learn just one thing from every conversation. And at the same time, it's also kind of like this therapeutic process. You're thinking out loud, which is going to help you work through a whole bunch of different things. And you're just, you're kind of exploring and saying, okay, this needs to be resolved and I need to do something about it. What am I going to do? So I, I guess it's kind of, you know, be okay with not having all the answers. Definitely talk to as many people as possible 
and yeah, make it, be vulnerable. You know, you, you mentioned, um, you know, specifically this specific industry you're in. Why, why mental health? Why is it important to you? You, you know, if, if in my estimation, if there is one critical factor that's going to drive the future of the human race is behavior. In healthcare, seven of the top 10 leading causes of death are behavior related, right? You look at the pandemic, a lot of people were sailing along fine when the economy was growing. Pandemic hits, boom, we have this massive, you know, all kinds of people coming out of the, the you know, the, the corners now with anxiety and depression. So very clearly, this is a huge, you know, um, factor in modern society. And it really drives a whole bunch of different things. For example, like climate change, right? I do things every day that affect climate change. Everyone does. Yeah. And if we're actually going to make a kind of a global change in it, we all need to individually figure out how can we assess our behavior and change it so that we can, you know, promote the the, the future that we want. So to me, it, it's such a, a, you know, kind of hugely important factor yes, in the future. Where do you envision uh, foresight in the next couple of years? You know, that's funny. Um, uh, I have my wild ideas. I try to keep them to myself. <laughs> the, the joke goes like this. Um, I, I tell someone, I've created a whole new approach to mental health care. And their response is, oh, it's a good thing. You're going to need it because you're crazy. <laughs> you, you know, like, like, why does someone like me create a new psychology? Um, so, yeah, you know, I, my, my dream is to, I just want to get on a soapbox and have the ability to offer a new perspective, vastly different perspective than what I think is being portrayed out there in the media and, you know, just in the news in general. And really what I promote is both personal responsibility and group accountability. And so many people don't do that. You know, if there's a problem, it's someone else's problem. It's, yeah. it's, it's you're causing a problem in my life. I'm like, no, you have the ability to resolve all the conflict in your life. I can show you how to do that. So, yeah, it's really kind of getting that perspective, getting foresight out there to be um, considered an alternative to mental health care. And then kind of all the other tangential things that will go along with it. You know, it would be great to advise policy on homelessness programs. Um, I'd love to, you know, develop uh, substance abuse treatment programs and so on, in addition to what I'm already currently working on. That, and that's a great point. How how difficult has it been to get your brand out into the public? You, you know, um, and, and here's the thing. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm an operations guy. Software development, managing people, building teams and so on. I am expert at that. I am not the marketing and sales guy. <laughs> But when you start your own business, you have to wear every hat, especially since yeah. I don't have a partner. So, you know, it's been a also a trial and error in that area. I've definitely banged my head up against the wall. But again, energize the bunny rabbit. I keep, you know, I keep going and going until I figure out what to do. Um, I'm getting better at it. I know that when I'm helping a person with the foresight process, you know, a one-on-one, -on -one, we go through this period of, uh, like, I, I only do like four or five sessions with a person and I'll text them in between. We come to this point usually like after two or three sessions where I see the light bulb goes on. The thing is I have to figure out how can I get to the whole general public to do that at once. So, you know, I know that once people kind of, you know, accept foresight as is that it is something valid and they start to actually think about it in their life, it's like life changing. So I, I, I'm not there yet. I, I don't know what the commercial is going to be. You know, if I'm going to have my gecko or something like that. Yeah. But yeah, and I, I'll probably hide, hire some creative agency to help me do that. Yeah, I mean, uh, that, that'd be my next question is how, how do you validate it? Yeah, I, I, and I'm actually doing that now. You know, one of the, um, you call it, uh, obstacles is that I, I, I'm creating a whole new approach to mental health care. But I have to reference that approach in order to show mine. So what I've actually hit upon recently with my uh, with my app is to I've created anxiety and depression tracks. Now I'm not a therapist, so I'm not going to help you with anxiety or depression. I'm going to tell you what the foresight versions of those are. So now what I'm doing is that you have these self assessments, the GAD seven and the PHQ nine for anxiety and depression, and literally I'm going to do a user study over the next you know probably four or five months. I'm going to have people take these self assessments, get a score. I'm going to put them through the, the foresight system and I'm going to score them again and we'll, we'll see what improvements they make. So I'm actually have to use the existing DSM system to validate that foresight works. There's no other way. And what, what is, so when you're kind of going, what kind of algorithm essentially do you use for the foresight system? Yeah. Um, I actually have, uh, a, you know, it one, and it was one of the critical elements in my developing the app. I had considered building the app for a couple of years, but I knew I didn't have the, the elements there. Back in like September or October, about a year ago now, 
I created this core flow chart and it stands for commit, observe, reflect, and edit. And basically it's the thought process that your mind is supposed to go to, to resolve conflict and includes, you know, a whole bunch of steps. And that is really the, you know, when I'm coaching a person, I'm helping them apply that core flow chart to their specific life. Um, and yeah, and that's what it is. So they, they do have this kind of tangible graphic that they can look at to see that they have to work through and they can then recognize, okay, I'm not good at this. For example, when someone says something, you get upset, you can't respond. Yeah. You know, can you learn how to bite your tongue? That's a really important skill. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. And it's, it's important not only just in the entrepreneurial world, but professional world, just life. Right. Learning yeah. is bite your tongue. <laughs> and on the other side of it also, and, and here's the other thing, there are plenty of people who never speak up. They That's get very upset true. about something and I teach them to, to get their voice. So really, you know, there's both sides of the equation for everything, but it's figuring out how do you present your complaint in a civil and constructive manner. And it's interesting because there's, there's such a fine balance, right? Well, for those individuals that have never spoken up before in meetings, and then they find their voice and begin to speak up, you're going to get some looks. Right. Um, and so it's, it's all about, I, I talk about this often, the power of speech and how important it is and the way we use our words and the way we treat each other, right? right. It's, it's, it's very important because you know, I talk about this in the corporate settings often. When you're climbing up that corporate ladder, make sure you're doing right by those people because eventually we might slip and fall down that corporate ladder. And one of those individuals is going to reach out and kind of prevent yeah, you from falling. Yeah, for sure. De definitely. So, so looking back, you know, David, uh, looking back at all the years, all the different entrepreneurial uh, experiences you had, what advice would you give yourself? Um, you, you know, I, I, I've been pretty good. I, I, I'm, I'm a person who has a lot of self-affirmation, hopefully not too much, <laughs> but you know, I, I, I'm okay with making mistakes yeah. and I actually almost, you, you kind of like, you know, talk about, speaking up and, and getting some looks at first. I, I, I would tell people to that get used to making mistakes. Throw yourself out there. Make a mess. Then clean it up. Care, care enough to clean it up. So, you know, I've kind of done all those things all along. Um, and I, yeah, I don't know if, I, if there's much of anything I would change. It, I, I would just probably say, yeah, you're right. It's going to happen. Just persist. It's going to happen. Yeah. And, you know, that's one thing I constantly say, too. You know, I've never failed a day in my life. I either... I either succeed or I learn, yeah. right? Because even if you fail, at least you tried. Yeah, definitely. So you're learning something new. Yeah. So for the folks at home, how can they get in contact with you? Where can they get information on Foresight, social medias, websites? Where, where can they find you? Yeah, I, I have two main websites. So Foresight Model, the number four, S-I-G-H-T, model.com is kind of like my corporate business site. I've now created a, a, a site based upon the app called Emotional Alignment. And that's the name of the app as well. So if you go to emotionalalignment.com, you'll kind of get a, a, sub, uh, a, a small version of the app and there are links on there to get the iOS and Android version. So that's probably the best website to go to. Perfect. David, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for tuning in to The Shades of Entrepreneurship. For more information, please follow The Shades of E on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or visit theshadesofe.com.